Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is the first video in the course on quantum mechanics and its applications and we begin with the dual nature of light. Uh, the question of what is the structure of light has puzzled scientists for a long time until the development of quantum mechanics. Before that, starting with Newton, there were basically two schools of thought. The first was that light was made up of tiny particles. Newton was one of the first people who believed this hypothesis and he called those particles corpuscles of light. This was said by Newton. And he put forward a few hypotheses about how light which was made up of particles behaves and uh, he was able to explain phenomena such as reflection, refraction on the basis of this for, uh, uh, particle nature of light. He was also able to explain how when a light beam passes through a prism, it separates into its constituent colors. So what exactly is a particle? In the definition of classical mechanics, we saw that a particle is something which just has a position and has no dimension at all. So the particle is completely represented by its x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinates and its velocities x dot, y dot and z dot where these are the velocities in the appropriate direction. If this were an object of three dimensions, we would also need to specify the orientation but we don't need to do that for a particle since a particle is a point object. Now, Newton said that light was composed of many particles and he was able to explain a few phenomena with this theory but then there were some other scientists at the same time who proposed a different theory of light which was that light did not compose of particles, in fact light was a wave. So what is the definition of a wave? It's actually quite a complicated thing but the standard definition is a wave is anything that consists of transport of energy without the transport of matter. As a simple example, if you have a string, a very long string, stretched at one end, and the other end, if you start moving it up and down, then there will be a wave developed in the string, a disturbance rather, and that disturbance would travel towards the right. Now, no particle in the string is actually moving towards the right. The particles in the string are moving up and down and because of this motion of the left end, the particles gain some kinetic energy and some potential energy and this kinetic energy and potential energy is transferred towards the right. That means pretty soon these particles will be moving up and down. However, the particles never move in the x direction. They never move from one point to another. So we have kinetic and potential energy being transferred without any motion of matter. This is called wave motion. Another example is sound waves where you have waves moving in the longitudinal direction in the horizontal direction but the amplitude of the motion of waves is very small. The energy is transported over long distances because the wave passes through air or some other medium. Huygens was one of the first people who developed a wave theory of light and just like Newton, he was able to explain phenomena such as reflection and refraction in Snell's law based on a wave theory of light. So because the current phenomena of light, which was reflection, refraction, splitting through prism, were able to be explained by both particles and waves, there was no clear decision as to what light actually was. But later on, we observed some other phenomena such as interference and diffraction. One of the most famous experiments was Young's double slit experiment. Which is often written as YDSE for short. The Young's double slit experiment which we'll study in detail later on was an experiment which related to the phenomenon of interference. And we know that interference and diffraction happens for wave things, for wave type quantities. 
So because of this interference and diffraction of phenomena that was observed, there were other experiments as well. Scientists for a long time believed that the wave nature of light was the correct thing because previous phenomena such as reflection and refraction were explained by both ways. However, there was a phenomena which was not able to be explained by the wave nature and it was called the photoelectric effect. And Einstein was able to explain the photoelectric effect in 1905 and he actually got the Nobel Prize for it. But he was able to explain it assuming once again that light was made up of particles. So then this debate started all over again whether light consists of waves or particles. There were other phenomena as well such as the Compton scattering. which also could only be explained by assuming that light was made up of particles. So there was this confusion one again, once again until the development of quantum mechanics in the early and late 1920s which told us that light was actually neither made up of particles nor a wave. Light was something completely different. It was what we will call quantum mechanical. And this was something completely new. Nobody had seen anything like this before. Before that, everything was classified as either particles or waves. But we realized that light was something completely different quantum mechanical, which we'll study in this course. But when that quantum mechanical thing was treated in different types of experiments, it behaved differently. So for example, if you measured certain things while kept other things constant in one type of experiment, you would see that it behaves the way we would expect particles to behave. But when you change the experiment, change the parameters you control and change the things that you are trying to measure in the experiment, it would start behaving like a wave. So essentially light had both properties, particles and waves, which explained our contradictions because we had experiments which were explained on the basis of particle nature and solely on the basis of wave nature as well. So light actually has what we call dual character or what we refer to as the dual nature of light. Which means in some cases it will behave the way particles behave and in other cases it will behave the way waves behave. But it was even more interesting than that because once we realized that light was quantum mechanical, we realized that so were electrons and other particles such as protons and neutrons. Which meant that matter itself was quantum mechanical. Before this electrons were generally assumed to be particles. But we were able to show after quantum mechanics that even electrons obey phenomena such as interference and diffraction if you put them in the right conditions. So they can also start behaving like waves which led us to conclude that there is no such thing as a wave or a particle. Essentially everything in nature is quantum mechanical but in some cases it behaves one way and we call that behavior the behavior of particles and in other experiments it behaves another way and we call that behavior the behavior of waves. So essentially everything in nature, electrons, light, photons, protons, they are all quantum mechanical, which means everything has dual nature. In some cases it behaves like particles, in other cases it behaves like waves. But the measurements, for example, in daily life, the measurements of things you see are of the order of a centimeter or a meter, which is much greater than the proposed wavelength of light. So it behaves like a light ray as opposed to a light wave. So the conditions in real life determine how we see it behaving, but actually everything in nature is quantum mechanical. And de Broglie was in fact one of the first people to be able to explain electrons and other particles on the basis of waves by giving his familiar theorem, which was called the de Broglie wavelength. Now before his theory, the wavelength was something that belonged only to waves, but he gave the theory P was equal to H by lambda or lambda equals H by P, where H is a quantity whose value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second, and it's called the Planck's constant. And this is a formula which relates the particle and wave natures of light. We saw initially that the particle was something which had x, y and z coordinates and x dot, y dot and z dot which was the momentum. So the momentum 
gives us the wavelength. Momentum is a particle property, wavelength is a wave property, and the wavelength gives us the momentum. So if you have an electron, for example, which has a certain momentum, if we try to make it behave like a wave, then the wavelength will be h by p. If we have a wave of wavelength lambda, then if we try to make it behave like a particle, then it will behave like a particle of momentum p. So we saw that light is actually neither waves nor particles. It has this dual character because it's what we call quantum mechanical. And that is what we'll study in detail in the rest of this course. But first we'll study in detail what the particle and wave nature of light entail. So the next video will be based on the particle nature of light. And after that, we will look at a wave nature of light. Thank you.